Three, two, one, let's go! Come on, Ted! <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> we can redo the countdown. We can, we can, Should we? No, am I supposed no, to no, yell no. with you guys? Yes, yes exactly. Is right. it the bald guy thing? Yes. <laughs> hey, I was waiting for the high five on that. Here we go. Right. Yes. It means the I'll bald. be really quiet. It's the hair club for men. Club for men. Oh, I got this one out of here. Still, yeah, so. you, we're, we hate you. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Olga, Miss Olga, Tad Smith. Welcome to Icon Live. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the invite. Yeah, seriously. So, Olga, you're still Apache, geophysicist at Apache. That's right. Heavily involved in societies. SEG, you're past president of the PBGS. Yes, past sir. Past president now to the Ronco Bianco. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh boy, that's a trouble for sure. I have to keep an eye on those guys. Now, you know. I'm sure they'll do just imagine. fine. I can only imagine. How's it mm -hmm. like being past president of the PBGS? It's pretty amazing the fact that you don't really have to do much except for keeping an eye on the current president and vice president. <laughs> <laughs> but while I was a president, it was a huge learning experience. Bring the mic a little yeah. bit closer. Absolutely. It was a huge learning experience and of course meeting everybody over and over again and making sure everything goes right. And yeah. you know, when you're a president, you don't really have a specific thing that you have to do except for making sure everybody else is doing what they're supposed to be right. doing. Yeah. So here comes an issue of like trust and that really build it like you have to believe in your team and I think that's uh, really important for like everybody you know right. if you work in a team board. yeah you can't just like herd or everything to yourself because you just get burned out really really fast I learned that yeah. the right way yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah just 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 trust people and uh, empower them and uh, it's actually kind of win-win situation you don't have to do as much and <laughs> people who you are delegated things to feel like they're growing professionally, so yeah. very important. Dad, have you ever been involved in societies as far as serving on the boards and things like that? Oh, quite a bit. I've been involved, pretty deeply involved with the uh, SEG since oh, the wow. early 2000s. And then uh, I, was, I, I was on and chaired the DISC committee for five or six years. And uh, I was the 2011 North American Honorary Lecturer. Uh, I ran, uh, I was on the editorial board for Leading Edge and I chaired, that's a four year term. The last, last term I chaired the editorial board that same year that I chaired the editorial board I was also president of the Houston or the Geophysical Society of Houston and uh, so that was a long year you know I was every, gonna every, every night required going upstairs to my study room and just spending two or three hours doing stuff wow. um, and then uh, most recently I was elected to the board of directors as a, a director at large for the SEG so I've, wow. yeah, I've been pretty involved for wow. 18 years I was talking to Olga I really believe in this stuff I think it's important and, and I I think those who join and get involved and actually are actively involved, like Olga is, are going to have long and productive and satisfying careers. Right. I 100%. There's a common thread amongst that. Mm -hmm. Amongst mm -hmm. that, the common thread is you're involved, you put time in to give back to the societies, and you end up with never working a day in your life, it seems like. You just... You come off that way. A lot of people come off that way that have had that kind of past. We're lucky we're in an industry where it feels that way. You get to True. do stuff that you yeah. really enjoy. You get to That's hang right. out with a, a lot of great people and do a lot of fun things. And if you make eye contact with the wrong person like Sue Pritchett, you end up giving interviews in booths, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that is exactly what happened to me. I would like to say that it's really important at, like early in your career to make a right kind you know, eye contact with the right person. Yeah. And uh, like that was Ted for me. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, Olga, would you like to do this? And uh, sure, what is it? What did I just sign up for? And wow. it just snowballs. Awesome. And I mean, rolling. that's the importance of these yeah. conferences for young professionals, right? That yeah. networking, be able to meet people like you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Who are so heavily involved in the society and now right. bringing up that next generation to just do the same. Right? Well, you, she hasn't away. mentioned it yet, but Olga's, mm -hmm. uh, this year, she's the assistant chair for technical committee chair. And next year, she'll be the committee chair and that happened because last year I got called by Nancy House do I know anybody who could do this and I thought I know just the perfect person <laughs> for this wow. as a matter of fact I know someone 
Pretty <laughs> so, sweet. So here she is. Yeah, <laughs> definitely uh, challenging. Yeah. Definitely yeah. will have to have a lot of help from. But luckily, as Ted mentioned, this uh, you know SAG is such a really tightly knit group of individuals. So mm -hmm. you're never alone. Like you, you never feel like you cannot do this because you can always call up on your mentors, and it's wow. just amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to serve a little bit of time with you on the PBGS board, and I can, without question, say we are in good hands as if Olga is involved. And I also want to say congratulations to you because you started doing that in 2000 and look around us I mean the SEG is so cool I mean the vibe of it all and meeting these people and like mm -hmm. you you helped pr you helped produce relationships that would have never existed without that time you put in and just congratulations on your time well spent with the societies mm -hmm. thank you career aside I mean this is you guys are changing the world yep. and, thank you, and you, Ted. It's, it's a hell of a deal so speaking of that you guys cross paths at work or just it was it at work you guys yeah, crossed yeah, paths yeah, first. Yeah, it was at work she so was a summer intern yeah. at summer Apache. intern 2000 and my mentor, and one of the mentors 2000 yes. when 11 2011 olga Gosh, cruises almost, through yeah 8 or oh, 12 god it's a long time like seven years ago because i've been in midland for the last six years and uh in houston for six months and that's when i had an internship Actually, two years before that, while well, I was still in school. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a while. <laughs> wow. So 2011, mm -hmm. she rolls in. She's an intern for geophysics. And Tad, you're like, what is going on with Olga? Right? Or with all these interns? What's happening? Mm -hmm. How do you weed it out? You are in a position where you're mm -hmm. looking at these interns and you're like, all right, we're, we have projects. Who's going to sink? Who's going to swim? Well, that, that not, not quite in her case. The way it played out in Olga's case, she was an intern. I think she's right the summer of 2011. And uh, um, at that time, another guy was in charge of what we called the geoscience development program. Okay. And so Olga reported to him for, I think, the first year. Then, then I got moved into that role about 2012. So I was, I, in, in an Apache at, at that time, and still to this day, I think all the, all the new hires, when they come on board, they join this geoscience development program oh, and they report to the program awesome. coordinator for, for three years. So for two of her years, she reported to me and, oh. and part of my job was just to oversee the projects, find their next assignment and, and you know, they had certain assignments they had to find do. Find all the typos in presentation. <laughs> uh, uh, find all the oil. I made them all re re present to me four times a year and they had to write a monthly report. No and, kidding. And, uh, so oh, you see snap. real quick, you see real quick at that, at that when you do that, who, who really rises to the top and they're all great. They all, they right. all did a fabulous job, but there's some that, sh there's always a distribution and Olga was just always one of them that really shined bright, right. you know, did well, a really good it, job. Dad. I was wow. just one of the many. Don't wow. don't, 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 don't. <laughs> look at how humble. Apache, oh, Apache yeah. don't hire bad people. So. <laughs> yeah. So how's the work schedule now? Going from all this time at Apache now into more of a consulting mm -hmm. role. How yeah. how is that transition been? So um, I was uh, retired uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and, and so my wife and I went uh, up to Ohio for two and a half months, three months, and. and uh, Spent spent time visiting family and and riding bikes and and uh, thinking a lot about uh, Extremely next good steps. Biker here. What what People I wanted to do and and yeah. dirt bikes road road bike road, road bike bikes. Yeah. and and I I do I want to do full on retirement or go back to another company job and I decided I really didn't want to do either so I've always wanted to kind of go do my own thing so my work now is is I'm consulting doing primarily rock physics type of stuff for uh, fifteen to twenty hours a week. Wow. So I don't set my alarm. I wear blue Let's jeans and t-shirts to work and, and uh, do <laughs> stuff I true. love to do. And well deserved. Start every day or most every day with a bike ride and, and uh, go get to work by 10 and leave at 4.30 or 5. And Is it because it's of good. you why the MS-150 leaves from Apache's building every year? Actually, they don't leave from Apache. They leave from the west side of town. What? It changed. When did that change? Well, uh, it was Apache. Um, oh, you're talking. Midland you're office. talking about the Midland MS. Yeah, that's oh, that Cactus oh, and I'm Crew. That's a different one. That's Cactus and Crew. There's somebody over there that obviously yeah. is very involved in the cycling community as well, and it's got to be somewhere at Apache because we all start there. Yes. No, uh, yes. Well, it was. Um, well, Shell and group Plan's of, a yeah, big bike. Michelle I don't know who else rides Ryan, out there. Um, Alex Gibson. There's, there's a lot of really, really strong cool. bikers out there. Mm -hmm. Really cool, actually. You guys mm -hmm. cyclists? Oh my God. No. <laughs> All right, so I can do down, I can do downhill yeah, because downhill it doesn't require pedaling. 
<laughs> but I, I went, before I went to the geoscience side, I was uh, prof- a mechanic for professional motocross guys. Oh, really? And motocross guys, that's what they do. The trainers are all cyclists. Eldon Baker and all these guys that are just amazing on the bikes. And that's, you have, it's the most grueling workout when you're two hours in and you still have to climb something. And it's, it's insane. And then you, when you're done climbing and you've completely exhausted yourself physically to get to the top, it is the craziest descent you can imagine yeah. on a road bike with tires this thin. You're hitting corners with a cliff going like 45 and looking for blo- potholes and water I've marks. You've got to be kidding me. You guys are insane. I'm drawing parallel to your career in geophysics here. You know, you're on a really sharp inclined for like the first you know <laughs> five years for school okay. and internship and the first three years and then you think you got it and then you're still riding up and up and up i don't think i reached my personal glide downhill yet oh, you're, no it's, you're, you're it's never too far you, away you know, from that. <laughs> i'm on the start slow and taper mode <laughs> Well, that is amazing. That's the way I ride man. bikes too. <laughs> nice, taking care of your heart, taking care of your body—that's a huge deal. That's ins- inspiration to anybody that's uh, getting into retirement mode, for sure. Very cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then so, Apache, you guys' relationships developed there, and now we're in this. We're in the industry right now, where I feel like we have a lot of hope and a lot of excitement about integrating these data sets and finding these anomalies that are going to get that step change that we all. Mm-hmm absolutely need in this industry creating more energy with less resources and less energy going in and that's you are now stepped aside consulting you're specifically hammering out some solutions for those problems and then Olga you're still on the side of putting this all together and and still on the front lines of how do you approach this beast I think it really takes a team of teams yeah. So this what we call it at Apache, and I think it's really proper term because it's not really about just geophysics or just engineering anymore. We used to have a you know goal to find a sweet spot just using geophysics data and petrophysics, for example. But right. it's really not the case anymore. For mm-hmm. horizontal drilling, you got to nail the depletion right. You have to have a spacing right. Right. You know, completion design itself, and each bench is different. And you know what yeah you what your neighbors are doing really right. important too. Right. So you really. You know, geophysics now is just a little tiny portion of this big cycle of understanding mm-hmm. what is happening. Yeah. And uh, makes me feel really proud, you know, that it's, amazing. it's just, yeah. Geophysics is kind of like that crossing mm-hmm. guard, I think you call it. Oh, the yeah. crossing guard, it, c- kind of, in a sense of engineering, technical people trying to find the solution. Geophysics is a way that we all can come together and understand our bits and pieces of it. Geologists, engineer, reservoir characterization, the size, the shape, what's it made out of. What are our assumptions going into this thing? And that's, mm-hmm. that is the future. That's where we stand. So what, in your guys' opinion now, is, uh, is where, where are we focusing this? Where is SEG focusing the help and the assistance of taking mentees and mentors, integrating them together, el- eliminating that gap that we all refer to? How are we getting to that step change? And what, are we, what should we be focusing on? Well, I think um, there's, there's some... You, you touch on some important issues there. One is is uh, the the membership of the SEG is al- it's always a challenge to get people to join, um, especially the the sort of the, the emerging career people, right? Mm-hmm. And so, one of our big functions, I think, is to reach out to the to the younger crowd, uh, show them the the benefit that SEG brings to the table, and introduce them to some of the more senior people. Um, and get them here so they can see all this great technology. You know, all Olga's, right. we've never had to encourage Olga to do this. She's always been <laughs> real good at it, you know. But um, I think that's one of the primary roles that SEG can can do is, is just engage with students, uh, grad students, uh, early career professionals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get, them, get them to the annual conferences. Get them networking. Get them seeing all the technology. Understand what's all out there that can help them with their day-to-day job. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I'll yeah I completely agree with Ted. Um, I'm on a membership committee as well, and this is the first question that always comes up. How do we get more people involved, and how do you get students who you know, just graduated to really continue up with mm-hmm. SAG? Uh, so the biggest thing is really uh, go back to the local societies. I think this is where it starts. It goes back to like, okay, the student is in this university, and he lives in this particular town that has like, you know, for example, Permian Basin Geophysical Society. Right. It's really important to get the students 
into those meetings first so they feel like they're part of the family of the local mm -hmm. family and then they got interested okay so what i can do next on a global level so it's really coming from bottom up instead of top down i think in my mind yeah so now uh, i'm also an evolve committee is the um, is this really exciting student program um, where kids from all over the globe coming together, learning uh, the full life cycle of a prospect and come to the gene present. Yeah. But this is what they want. we want them to feel like, that they're already part of the family, that they're already here at SAG. So when they graduate, they have no other option just to continue on with their yeah. family, mm. you know? Yeah. And um, I, th I think, yeah, I think that's a trick, just to really empower people to do something. And that's when they feel like, they're important, they can, they really right. benefit, and they really carry on this legacy of SEG in You're future. Just really instilling that idea that, hey, you know, because uh, I know personally mm -hmm. from being the president of mm -hmm. the, my, the chapter of the AAPG at my last university, right? It was a lot of people, once they got those jobs, they just kind of stepped away from the society. Yeah. They used the AAPG or SEG, whatever it would be, to get their foot in the door, and then they would just kind of take a step back because mm -hmm. they're just like, I got the job. That's what I always wanted. But mm -hmm. being here and talking to people and, you know, this exchange of ideas, that's the most important part, right? right. That's the continuing education, that ability to, you know, want oh, to yeah. learn more, right? And that's how, and that's what basically creates a long career like you guys, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's that's what fosters yeah. that that passion exactly i definitely learned that my my best knowledge about the uh, industry about permanent basin came after 530 when you lift you know left the job and go <laughs> hang out with your buddies from other companies and that's when exactly. you <laughs> really learn all the ins and outs yeah. so yeah so there's it's interesting and to get a little deeper on the subject i feel like there's a there's a definitely a reality between people that have intuitive curiosity and that personality that can can see that or be told that and be taught that and that can leverage that and understand what we're saying and then I feel like there's the reality of people that say I just I work to live I'm not that into it you know what I mean they, they're a great employee they have great assets they bring everything but they're just not into it mm -hmm. so there's that I feel like there is some there's a personality thing amongst all geoscientists and the industry in itself that there are some that just don't aren't really into it in that way. But how can we better foster the people that want to do that, right? Because then they can then maybe use that personal relationship to inspire them to be a little more open to it, support it financially, support it however you can, right? But the SEG is allowing that platform. The SEG yeah. is putting that forward with Evolve and these other things that start from graduate school to TEDs, or to, 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 to TEDs, <laughs> sorry, to TEDs. And that's where they are, right? And so we, we have this on, huge man. gap. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just I was on one, and I, I went with the normal, the, the more common middle letter. That's okay. <laughs> but where I was going with that is like it, it is a challenge, and that's where we are today. And that's why again we have this hope, we have this excitement that we know there are people out there that are ready to listen to what you've designed and what you've created with SEG and what you're pushing forward with SEG. And we are absolute fans of it exhaust us and our platform to help in any way to make this happen because we are right. just we're fans of integration and elevation of this industry our societies and what we get to do as professionals it's a wonderful wonderful life okay and i think with that this is the end of the show what do you guys think anything close this out no i think i, I like what you're touching on there i i find that that those sorts of people you're talking about sort of self-identify and, and what managers can do is kind of get out of the way and give them the resources and the time to go do these things wow. for one mm -hmm. thing, right? Wow. Yes. And, and we have to define those people who sort of self-identify as, as somebody that really wants to be engaged. But then also you got to identify those folks and maybe you're a little bit more shy about it, but also absolutely want to be out there. And that's a tougher thing to do. But the SEG recognizes this is a huge issue. We need to reach out to the young crowd. We need to foster relationships with them and we need to show them the the relevance and of, of what we do when we talk to them so i, I think all of us mm -hmm. uh Olga, myself and everybody on the scg board or an scg committee we're always anytime we're talking to young people we ask are you involved are you a member mm -hmm. so just 
promote that. Simple ask the same that. questions right. yourself. Just ask the question. Right. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And uh, I feel like young people really have to try themselves out in uh, many different roles before they really find what really suits them. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, I have to serve on like five different committees before I found the one that I'm really, really enthusiastic about. But that's okay because you serve for a year and then you leave Figure that spot out. for mm -hmm. someone else right. and then you move on. Um, but this is part of our goal to educate people about what's out there, what's available to them and really explain cool. how it might benefit them. You know, it's, I think you're right in the way that people have to have that personality to yeah. be outgoing, but also it's um, a role of mentors to really point people in the right direction. Yeah. If that wouldn't twist my arm like seven years ago, wouldn't you know, I, I, prob <laughs> I wouldn't be standing here for sure. Wow. So it's really up to us now to twist someone else's arm because they might not even wow. know what they're missing. Love that. So. Love it. Love <laughs> so it. So go That's out the there and twist episode. someone's arm. We're right. twisting arms at Icon Live. Thank you guys right. so much. Yeah. It was an honor to share Thank the microphones. You. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you having us. Great show. Us.